Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose f is Riemann integrable on a comma b and k is a real number. Then the function kf, which is given by multiplying all the alpha values of f by the constant k, is Riemann integrable on a comma b as well. And the integral from a to b of kf is equal to k times the integral from a to b of f. Now, before we get into proving this theorem, let's first remind ourselves of some things. First of all, let's consider our closed interval a comma b. Well then, a partition of a comma b is a collection of non-overlapping closed intervals whose union is a comma b. So for example, this collection of closed intervals would be a partition of a comma b. And we might label these intervals i1, i2, and so on. We might label the endpoints of these intervals x0, x1, x2, and so on. In general, a subinterval ii would be given by xi minus 1, comma xi. Now, a tagged partition is when we select a point from each of these subintervals. And let's say that the points that we select are these. The points that we select are what we call tags, and we might label the tags T1, T2, and so on. So this would be a tagged partition of A comma B. And the way we can symbolize a tagged partition is by a letter with a dot on top. And in the collection, we have a collection of ordered pairs. The first coordinate of an ordered pair would be the subinterval. The second coordinate would be the tag of the subinterval. So this would be the tagged partition represented above. Now, the norm of a partition is the length of the longest subinterval of the partition. So in this partition, the norm is going to be the length of I2. And the way that we symbolize the norm of a partition is like this, with double vertical bars. Now, the definition of a Riemann sum is as follows. Given f is a function from a comma b to r, and p is a tagged partition of a comma b, we'll say that these are the subintervals and these are the tags, then the Riemann sum of f corresponding to p is given by this formula. So what's essentially going on here is we're adding up the areas of a bunch of rectangles, where the width of each rectangle is the length of each subinterval while the height of each rectangle is the output value of the function f at each of the tags. And as you can imagine, if the function goes below the x-axis, then the output value of one of the tags might be negative, and so we would interpret the area of the rectangle in that case as negative area, right, in some sense. So that's essentially what our definition of a Riemann sum is. So now let's talk about what it means to be Riemann integrable on a comma b. To say that f is Riemann integrable on a comma b means the following. To say f is Riemann integrable on a comma b means that there exists a real number l such that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta gradient zero such that for all tagged partitions of a comma b whose norm is less than delta, we have that the absolute value of the real sum minus L is less than epsilon. Now we have proven that the real number L which satisfies this statement is unique and we denote it as the integral from a to b of f. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace L here with this notation. Now the whole goal 
is to prove that the function kf is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and that the value of its integral is this. And by definition of the Riemann integral, that means the following. It means the same thing that we have above. It's just instead of dealing with the function f, we're dealing with the function kf. And we're trying to show that the value of the integral of kf is k times the integral of f, which is why we have this here. So now in proving this theorem, we're also going to be using a preliminary result. And that involves the integral of a constant function. If g is a function from a comma b to r, and g of x is equal to c for all x in its domain, so in other words, g of x is a constant function where the alpha value is always c, then the integral from a to b of g is equal to c times b minus a. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now the whole goal is to prove that kf is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and that this is the value of its integral. And to prove that, we're going to split this up into two cases. Either k is equal to zero, or k is not equal to zero. In either case, we're going to show that kf is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and that this is the value of its integral. Let's first consider the case where k is equal to zero. If k is equal to zero, then if we look at the function kf, well then, every output value of the function kf is going to be zero, because we're just doing zero times each output value of the function f. So kf is a constant function of zeros. And therefore, according to star, we can conclude that the integral from a to b of kf is equal to zero times b minus a. And 0 times b minus a is equal to 0. And 0 is equal to 0 times the integral from a to b of f, which we know is defined because f is a Riemann integral on a comma b. And since 0 is equal to k, I'm just going to replace 0 with k. And so this shows that kf is Riemann integral on a comma b, and that its integral is equal to k times the integral of f. So this completes the case where k is equal to zero. Now let's consider the case where k is not equal to zero. And again, we're gonna show that kf is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and that this is the value of its integral. And so in this case, we're going to use the definition of the Riemann integral. So to prove kf is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and that this is the value of its integral, we're going to prove this statement. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. From here, we want to find a delta greater than zero such that this is true. Now, we know that f is Riemann integrable on a comma b, which means we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over absolute value k. So taking epsilon here to be epsilon over absolute value k, we have that there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all tag partitions p of a comma b whose norm is less than delta, we have that the absolute value of the Riemann sum minus the integral of f is less than epsilon over absolute value of k. Now remember, we're trying to find a delta greater than zero such that this is true. And the claim is, if we take delta to be the delta we have in our proof, then this statement will be true. So to prove this statement, 
let's give ourselves an arbitrary tag partition P of A comma B whose norm is less than delta. And we'll say that the subintervals of the partition look like this and the tags look like this. So now we want to show that this inequality is true. Now the idea is we can show that this Riemann sum, the Riemann sum of Kf corresponding to this tag partition is equal to K times the Riemann sum of F corresponding to that tag partition. So we can essentially just pull the K out. And to see how that happens, well, by definition of a Riemann sum, what is this? We have this. Now, by definition of the function kf, we know that kf of ti is equal to k times f of ti. But then, since k doesn't depend on i, we can pull k to the outside of the sum. But then, this sum is precisely the Riemann sum of f with this partition. So this shows we can essentially just pull k to the outside. So these two guys are equal. So now, we're in a position to show that this inequality is true. So we can replace this Riemann sum with k times this Riemann sum, and then we can factor out a k from these two terms, but then we can rewrite this as a product of absolute values. This is just equal to the absolute value of k times the absolute value of this guy, but then let's remind ourselves that p is a tag partition of a comma b whose norm is less than delta. And therefore, based on how we chose delta, we could conclude that this guy is less than epsilon over absolute value k. So this guy is less than epsilon over absolute value k, which means this entire thing must be less than absolute value of k times epsilon over absolute value of k. The absolute value of k just cancel out and we're left with epsilon. Right, that's the reason why we chose epsilon over absolute value of k in the statement is because we knew that we would end up getting a k, we could pull out the k's, and the absolute value of k's would end up canceling out. And so we have shown that this guy is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted. And so we have proven this statement, which means we have proven that kf is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and that the value of the integral is this. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.